Josh Green, super athletic. The bounce, the wingspan, the Aussie. You know, it's just crazy to think four years ago I was just a kid in Australia, and now I'm playing on ESPN. So Mike Schmitz of, of ESPN, we're here with Arizona guard Josh Green. Uh, Josh, kind of unprecedented times for you know for all of us. I know we're we're all kind of kind of quarantined and trying to do what we can, but I, I appreciate you taking the time to to join us for another virtual film room here. And obviously, we've been following you for. For years now, we've seen you at the Hoop Summit, Basketball Without Borders, college, uh, all different levels. And wh what do you think it is that, that you can bring to the next level? Yeah, I think um, when it comes to the next level, you know, just my competitiveness. You know, I feel like uh, that's going to be able to take me as far because, you know, I, I hate losing. You know, I hate it. So I think um, with that, as far as my defensive effort, you know, I've really learned how to pick that up, especially going to the college system and, you know, being able to have my presence on not only the offensive end, but the defensive end. Yeah, your your defense, I mean, just going back through your film, it was super impressive. You know, on the ball, off the ball, defending point guards, twos, threes, uh, your awareness, your technique. Yeah, I think it's uh, among some of the best in the draft. Uh, have you always been that type of player? Ha and and what do you think are the keys to, you know, being such an effective defender? Yeah, um, I think, um, so when I first came over here, you know, I played at a high school out here and in uh, Phoenix, where I played at uh, with DeAndre Aiden, and um, I was a I wasn't known at all. And I remember somebody telling me, you know, for you to be able to get recognized, you know, you're playing against all these uh, great players like Gary Trent Jr. and all these other players in the grind session, and you know, it's going to come down to your defense and how you can play on that. So I remember one of the first times I was recognized uh, on the national level was just because of my defense. I enjoy it. I enjoy playing defense. You know, I think it's fun. I think it's fun seeing players get frustrated not being out to score. So overall, I just enjoy it, and I feel like it uh, it helps the team out a lot, brings energy to the court. Yeah, I mean, you were definitely with the right uh, coach for, you know, somebody who really appreciates uh, toughness and, and competing defensively every possession, and I think you did a great job on that end, end of the ball and end of the floor this season. So we're going to start with that. We're going to start with your defense as, as we go into your film here, just because I do think, like you said, that's going to be your initial value add is just being able to be a disruptor and defend multiple positions. And so before we go kind of through the categories here, I uh, want to show you this play because I think this is one of your strongest defensive possessions of the year. Uh, and, and just kind of talk me through this, uh, what you're seeing, and, and uh, just kind of the progression of this play, if you could. Okay. So you're in the corner there against Jaden McDaniels. And you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. You're doing a great job of kind of denying the post entry. Um, and then as the ball reverses, what do you see here? Okay, so yeah, so um, basically the way we uh, have been taught is how to play defense, especially against Isaiah Stewart. Zeke was uh, in the three-quarter front. Mm -hmm. um, and initially, you know, the only open space is going to be him to be able to spin uh, baseline side. So I know that I'm going to have to present some type of help, or even if it's just a stunt, uh, to make sure to make he, sure he second guesses that. Um, you know, I didn't want to come over too much, but just my presence being in the middle there um, makes Isaiah be able to reconsider his decision. And just having that back support for Zeke, you know, it's, uh, Isaiah's a very talented player, and uh, just being able to be there and help him, um, it's just uh, our principles as far as defense goes at Arizona. And now we're going to dive into your, your on-ball defense. So I think you're one of the best sit-and-slide defenders, I would call it. So you have your guys who are... Um, you know, just kind of rangy athletes who can, you know, play off their length and contain and contest, or they, you know, get beat a lot, but they recover at the rim. You do a really good job of actually, like, keeping guys in front. Uh, what is the key to that? Uh, I think preparation. You know, I think the biggest thing I took out of it is taking a professional approach. You know, when I, when I got to Arizona, you know, I focused on my diet. I focused on my recovery. But not only that, I, I made sure that I watched extra film on not only the person I was defending, but also the other players on the team uh, and their tendencies. And uh, I would go through that with my assistant coaches and sometimes Coach Miller. So um, going into the game, I was usually prepared on what they wanted to do. Uh, and I felt like that helped me out a lot. Yeah, and I think it helps having such a strong base. You know, you do a great job of sitting down in a stance. Uh, so I, I love how you're there on the catch. And then you're just really doing a great job sliding with them, staying low, contesting, um, really, really good defense. And then a few clips here against Colby Ross. What are you trying to force him into? Yeah, so in this game, I remember he was uh, he was their best scorer coming into the game. And I remember going through film with him 
uh, very good shooter, getting it, trying to create his own shot. So my biggest thing was trying to get him to put the ball on the floor against me, uh, just because I'm, I'm longer. Uh, try to try to get a hand to the ball. So I was trying to get him to make him put on the floor and get to the paint. And we got we got uh, two seven footers in the game right now as well. So if he can finish above them, you know, good on him. Um, Peyton Pritchard, what what was it like uh, defending him? And and I know he. He had some big moments against you guys. Um, yeah. What are the keys to stopping him? Uh, you know, a, a player like that, so experienced in the college system, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, uh, it would have been cool to be able to, to guard him more, but I think Dylan did a good job on him in the game. Uh, but there's only so much, you know, film you can watch on a player like that who is so experienced in the game and, you know, getting getting – getting to the bucket, really, dude, he does everything. So that's what my biggest goal was, was to try to get him to put the ball on the floor and uh, get to the bucket. Yeah, and you do an excellent job of that. I mean, you're active, you're up, your feet, just look at your feet constantly moving, turning him, and then, okay, he gets a little bit of an edge, but you recover, and like you said, I mean, Coloco, he's a tough guy to finish over. And, and so we talked about your ability to kind of slide and, and keep guys in front. Um, you also do a great job of, of containing and contesting and, and using that 6'10 wingspan to really bother jump shooters. And then if they do get a, you know, a step on you to the rim, then you're able to, to recover with your length also. Talk me through this possession. I thought this was also one of your best defensive possessions. I think it's against Daniel Utomi uh, of Utomi. USC. Um, what, are you, what are you seeing here? Kind of talk me through this one. My biggest thing was, you know, coming to the game, I knew he was a shooter. He was their primary shooter in the starting lineup. So I knew... Once a once their point guard tries to attack the gap, you know he's going to try to lift up. It's one of the plays they run a lot of the game. So I made yeah. sure one of the things just Coach Miller does before every single practice we start is high hand closeouts. And when I mean he will not go into the next thing until everybody does it perfect. I, like it's it's crazy. So I think um, this is an instance of where it, it's really helped us out. So I made sure I, I try to have a high hand and try to put him make him make him attack it. Um, and yeah. And then here against C.J. Ellaby, what does he like to do? Left hand, uh, primary left hand dribbler. Uh, if he's going back to his right, you know, he's going to spin right back to his left hand. Uh, I watched a lot of film on that, and I realized if he's going left, he's going to keep going left. Goes right, it's going to be one dribble, and then back to his left. So I just made sure that uh, I stayed in front of him, and yeah. Yeah, you had some really good possessions against him also. Some closeout situations that we'll, we'll dive into later, but um, – just great defense. The activity, and you know, you're putting him on your on his right hand here. You take away the left hand drive, spins back, and I mean, you live with that one foot mid range fall away all day long. One note: for as good as you are on the ball defensively, sometimes can be a little bit jumpy. Um, yeah. So just you know, learning players' tendencies, like you said, and, and staying down on shots like that. Uh, but again, I mean, you do a great job with your activity. You do a great job with your length here against St. John's. And even if you do get beat, like look at that contest. That's perfect. I mean, we saw you, like I said, against point guards, wings. How many positions do you think you can defend at the next level? I think at the next level, I can uh, definitely defend the one through four for sure. Um, you know, I think uh, I think that's one of the things which uh, helps me out just being versatile. You know, I think uh, me being able to defend that many positions can can only really help me. And yeah, for you sure. Know, yeah, uh, we like I said. I mean, we we saw that all season long with your defense. Now, ball screen defense a little a little bit different. Um, I think you're great in one-on-one -on -one situations. You're great in closeout situations. Uh, still kind of learning some of the nuances of, of guarding ball screens. How would you evaluate yourself there? And, um, yeah, what type of pick-and-roll defender are you right now, you think? Yeah, so it's uh, you know it's hard because during the season I had so many ways I had to defend a certain on-ball screen. You know, So sometimes, so for instance, in this game, if it was C.J. Ellaby setting the on-ball screen, I'd have to switch. If yep. it was somebody else setting the on-ball screen, you know, I'd have to get it over a slipper sometimes. So. Yep. With my with my position and guarding one through four and different players each each uh, each game it would change up each game so I had to make sure I watched film with other coaches and everything and made sure that I knew the certain things so I think once getting it down um, I think anytime you really come off a screen you know it's it's hard it's unpredictable you don't know if they're gonna reject it or anything you don't know what they're gonna do so I think um, definitely me uh, just going over film and watching it it's definitely gonna help out. Yeah, I would say one thing that'll help guarding ball screens is just ball pressure, you know? Yep. It's taking away their airspace. Maybe you could see that a little bit here. I don't know what you guys are trying to do if you're if he's calling for a switch or what. It seems like maybe a miscommunication, but, you know, he ends up having just kind of a straight line drive to the rim. Um, maybe not a foul, but, you know, uh, probably a little too easy. Uh, but here again, you know, one, one thing I would just say is, like, ball pressure. I know you guys are uh, – 
you know, I think Zeke is going to like hard, hard hedge here. Um, but if you're able to take away that gap, you become a lot harder to screen. Um, and, but eventually, I mean, you do a phenomenal job. You get blasted, and then, and then you recover with your length. Um, you know, that's a big-time play. Uh, I thought throughout the year you did a really good job of switching on the bigs um, and not just, like, actually guarding them, but what goes into that and, and reading the game and knowing when to. What do you see here? Yeah, so, um, I mean, first of all, I see uh, – the first thing is whenever I see Nico on a, on a big, even sometimes when it's like a three-man, like a, someone like a Daniel Utomi from USC, you know, I want to make sure that he gets back, pushed out back to a guard and um, I'll take the big. Um, you know, even if you see Zeke, like Zeke's, Zeke's still on a, a guard right now, but Zeke can defend the perimeter. So I just – my main goal is just trying to get Nico out of that situation and make sure that uh, I cover the big. And you did a perfect job of that here. You know, you kind of kick him out to the corner, and then early contact, bodying him up, keeping him out of the paint, making it a tough catch. Um, you know, it's a switch-heavy NBA now, and, uh, you know, bigs are asked to guard the perimeter, and, and guards and wings are asked to guard the post. And, uh, you know, I think part of your intrigue is the fact that you're able to do that. Um, so, yeah, some really, really bright spots for you there. And then um, kind of winding down here defensively, uh, closeouts. So, t- to me... Uh, I've seen you guys drill it in practice time and time again. Yeah. You know, what? what's the key? I guess, what does Coach Miller preach? And what do you think is the key to a, a good closeout? Yeah, it's, so always high hands, you know. A closeout's going to be nothing if you don't have a high hands. And, you know, making sure that you, your, your feet are choppy. Are choppy and, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is making sure that you, you have a, a good base. Because if you don't have a good base, it's going to be very easy for somebody to uh, beat you right off the dribble. So if you're closing out correctly and chopping your feet the right way, uh, you should be able to plan off each foot, depending on which way he goes, and create a good base for yourself to uh, start the defensive possession. Yep. So so I, I would say the best defenders are the ones who, which, you, which you've shown many times you can do, are the ones who can get a shooter off the line and then also contain him, right? Um, yeah. And here I think he just kind of, I don't know if he hit you with his hand or what, but just gets to the front of the rim. So, um, you know, maybe being a little bit more consistent with, with the, the technique and the effort on the closeouts. But overall, man, I thought really, really impressive stuff. Um, and then off the ball, so this is kind of winding down here. Uh, I, was, I was really impressed, too, with your awareness and, and your instincts um, around the rim, on the perimeter. Uh, what are you looking at here? Uh, well, Christian has Peyton Pritchard on it, yep. so uh, you know Christian's a very good defender. But at the end of the day, you know Peyton's a very good offensive player and knows how to uh, maximize who's whoever's uh, on him defending him. So um, I had a big on me, uh, Shaquille Justin. So yep. I just needed to make sure that I could uh, maintain him, but at the same time, you know, make sure that I'm in there for help for Christian. And that's perfect. You know, verticality at the rim, forcing a really tough shot, then you're on the ground for the loose ball. Um, great awareness. Um, now, this is just a, a little subtle thing, but um, just these bumps on cross screens, like they go a long way, you know, doing these little things. You don't always see that from a freshman. Um, what are you looking at here? Yeah, so I needed to make sure uh, to give Zeke enough time. I had to, you know, Coach Miller goes over it a lot in practice, making sure that I, I, I the passer and making sure that I uh, at least give Zeke's man a little bit of a hit. Uh, or hold up for a second because, um, you know, just something like that gives Z good entry so he, they can't really make the entry pause. So little stuff like that we work on all the time at practice. No, for sure. But every, as you know, the NBA game is moving fast. So every little second you can buy your teammates is huge. And to me, really, like, you're at your best when you're doing these little things. Um, winning plays, chase down blocks here against Oregon after attacking, at least trying to attack the offensive glass. Then you get the chase down. Uh, and then here, look at the lift on this. I mean, that, that's big time. You know, just, just being aggressive, uh, attacking the defensive glass. Like I said before, you know, you have the tools to be one of the better wing guard defenders, uh, you know, in the league someday. On the offensive side of the ball, where do you think you're at right now? I think, um, you know, with the, with the role I played on the team at Arizona, you know, I think, uh, you know, it changed a bit since my high school days. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of stuff uh, – like, which I, I feel like I need to get better at, like, scoring off the dribbles, uh, second move creation, like, you know, if, you know, coming, like, double moves type of situations, getting, making sure I get to the basket. You know, a lot of it can't just be straight mm-hmm. and ripped straight to the basket. So I think that's one of the biggest things I'm going to – I've been working on now, actually. Um, it's just continuing to do that, making sure that I'm, I'm strong with my dribbles, tightening up my handle, 
Um, and then at the shooting end, you know, I think I, I think I've done a, a good job of shooting. You know, I think it's just more being confident with it. You yeah. know, I think um, there was a time throughout the season where I just wasn't very confident, and it showed um, as far as shooting. And then when it came to it, you know, at the end of the season, I started feeling a lot more confident. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think I'm in the I'm, I'm the best. Like I mean, I'm at my best during you know transition play. Um, and also creating for others. You know, I feel like I do a, a good job of creating for others. And, you know, although I might have a scoring opportunity, I feel like um, if someone's more open, I'm, I'm pretty good at uh, giving them that, that extra shot. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And definitely in transition is where you've always excelled, you know, ever since we first started watching you. I think like 27, 28% of your offense came in, in transition this year. And, you know, the NBA is a, a wide open up and down game. And so I think you'll be able to shine even more. And, and yeah, you're one of the best lane fillers in the draft. And even on made baskets, like, look at this. I mean, they score and you guys already know, like, okay, um, we're, we're out and running. And then on his head. Uh, I love that. You know, I, I think we could have seen more of that from you is just like going and putting guys on posters and we'll get into that eventually. But because you have that, you know, you're, you're a great athlete. Um, and then you can play make in the open court also, you know, uh, we didn't see it as much with the ball in your hands, but you made some really good reads after filling the lanes. Uh, I, I like this, like a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of flair. What, what do you call this? <laughs> um, I'm always like to, I'm always like to play like that. You know, I growing up in Australia, you know, I actually, I played uh, point guard and stuff and then I started growing a lot more when I yep. came over here. Um, but you know, I think, uh, I think it just adds a little fun, a little bit more energy to the game. You know, yep. if you make a play like that, you know, it, it brings energy to the game. And I think the next step is, is probably just becoming a little more comfortable, um, you know, creating in these type of situations. Um, anything you would have done differently here? Yeah, I think uh, I could have definitely like pushed it up uh, a lot faster, you know, without even dribbling it once and then getting it back from Jamal. Or even, you know, instead of me driving it, you know, you can see the kick to Stone, yeah, uh, which can cause a three for him, or you can uh, one more kick it to Nico for three. And now we're gonna, you know, kind of break down your most likely role in the NBA in the half court is playing off of others, spot shooting. And to me, you're at your best when you stay in your shot, like when you finish mm -hmm. your follow through. Uh, most of your misses, I feel like, are short or flat. Um, but, like, this is perfect. Like, you see how you finish your shot? Do you feel that? Has that been an emphasis as well? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a big thing. You know, I keep working on, you know, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I just run away from my shot, and it's just not good. So I, I've gone through a lot of film with Coach Murphy at Arizona on that, um, yeah, about not running away from my shot and making sure that I stay in it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely been a big, uh, emphasis and I'm still work. I'm working on it right now with my trainer to make sure that I, uh, continue to make sure, um, everything's in a straight line and everything stays stable. Yeah. And you can see kind of just the results when you, when you kind of snake bite your follow through there, just, just not as accurate, but when, when you really stay in it, um, you know, there's no reason you're not going to be a, a very good standstill shooter in the NBA. And, and we've seen it uh, time and time again. Um, and then a, as we're kind of working our way through this here, you're finishing um, in the open court, really good. And, and we saw the dunk earlier. Like you have this in you all day. You know you can put guys on posters. We've seen it at a variety of different levels. Do you know what you shot at the rim in the half court though? No, I don't. No. So in the half court, you shot thirty-eight percent at the rim, but you made eighteen floaters. So you have the touch shots. Uh, but I think with your tools, your body, your explosiveness. I, I do think you can improve as a finisher in the half court. Do you feel that as well? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I remember this day we played very well. You know, it was yeah. a time where I should have just dunked the ball. Um, yeah, I definitely I, I agree with that, yeah. And so you touched on it earlier, trying to kind of work on your, your ball skills, your secondary moves, combo moves, um, and just becoming kind of more comfortable in those situations. I know this year you played, you know, more as a transition runner, spot-ups, uh, I think you use like 21 pick and roll possessions and, and 12 isolation possessions. So rely, you know, more so relying on your athleticism, uh, attacking gaps in a straight line. Um, but like you said, you know, we've seen you play with the ball in the past. We've seen you play a little bit of point guard also. Uh, but I do think there's probably room to improve your ball screen game. Um, where are you at right now as a as a pull up shooter? Because uh, that's I, I think that's a big key to becoming a a shot creator at the NBA level is, you know, just the ability to shoot the ball to dribble. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I've always loved my mid-range shot. Um, you know, I think it, it helped. I used to use it a lot. I used to use it a lot in high school and my AAU days, and it kind of just, like, 
you know, in college, like it's, it's, it's hard to kind of create that, that play for you. You know, if you, if it, it, I feel like in college, a lot of it is like, you're either going to shoot a three or get to the basket, create a foul more and moments yeah. and plays and stuff like that. So, um, I think it's, a, I think it's a very good, I think it's a very underrated tool being you know, able to shoot the mid range and, you know, I want to make sure that I'm continuing to implement it as my game. Uh, and, and then lastly, to kind of wrap up here, your court vision, like you said, I, I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, you've made some really smart reads this year, whether it's in transition and the half court, um, you know, really good basketball. And then, so we're going to look at maybe some instances where you had an open man and missed him. And then also how you kind of corrected that. Um, so what's your read here as you're coming off? Um, my read initially is a wide open drive, but I think, uh, probably the smartest thing would be to stop behind Chase. Uh, and like we talked about before, is shooting that wide open shot, uh-huh. especially if the big isn't coming out and extending. Um, I think that's a, it's a high percentage shot there. Um, but when he's like, when he, when the, when I saw the guy closing out like that and I see a wide open basket, you know, my initial reaction was trying to get to the basket. And you do, I mean, it's, you know, you're, look how low to the ground you are, you're explosive, you're physical. Um, that's great. I mean, you beat him, but who do you have here waiting for you? Zeke. Yeah. So maybe the drop off there, uh, you know, their, their, uh, sink man is, is late. Um, so you have Zeke and then tough finish at the rim, but then here you can see the opposite, right? You attract Isaiah Stewart on the drive, and then you hit Zeke perfectly. What what are you looking at here? Yeah, um, I I see more I see more of the inside open. Um, you know, especially because Chase mixed his screen, um, and he changed it uh, last second. So it kind of threw the defense off, and it kind of created a driving lane through the open. And I feel like if I'm driving through the open, you know, there's multiple ways you can kind of go to create a play. For sure. And then Chase's defender goes with you, and then you right off a live here will make that righty hook pass. I love that. You know, it's quick, it's instinctual. That's the kind of basketball you, you want to play. Um, and, and some of your best passes, I thought, were just straight, like, read and react, barely even had the ball in your hands. Like, perfect. The ball is moving constantly. That's great basketball. Every coach loves that. Every fan loves that. And I love this. At what point do you know that, that that's the one more read here? Uh, right when I saw the sports just dig in, you know, I knew that McKinley Wright and Nico's man would be coming out to me. So yeah. with, without without even me setting my feet, I knew that Nico would be wide open for a shot. And that's a big-time pass. And, and, again, you're going to be playing with probably all-stars. You're going to be playing with a lot of accomplished guys. So they're going to like playing with you when you, when you, you know, kind of have that style. And um, So, Josh, I, I really appreciate your time, man, and sitting down and, and breaking this down and I'm um, curious kind of just what your goals are, you know, moving forward as we get closer to the draft. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing for me, you know, a lot of people, you know, they want to go as high as they can in the draft. And obviously that's a, it's, it's, you know, it's a great accomplishment going high. But, you know, for me, I want to make sure that I go to a team with the right fit um, where I'm able to have an opportunity at uh, where I can see my development continuing to progress. So it's more of just the, the best fit for me, you know, if that's, dropping down a couple spots and uh, you know I'm more than happy for that you know I want to make sure that I go to a, a great team great organization with a great development program side of things great well yeah I mean wherever wherever you land I think you're going to be able to add a lot of value just with all the things we talked about and in your defense and your transition play and uh, it's been cool to watch you you know progress over the last few years and, and again I really appreciate you taking the time to do this so stay safe and, and stay healthy and, and good luck with the whole process Yes, sir. Sounds great. I really appreciate that. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.